would you take uh, your, your brand new copy of the New Testament and uh, hold it in your hand? These are for you to keep. I better, it would better be said, these are for you to use. And it would be glorious if you wound up giving it away. Or if you used it and you wanted to get another copy to give away, we will make that possible as well. What I want to ask you to do now is to uh, take this copy of the New Testament and, and take that cover off. I was curious today thinking about, I wonder how many in the room will tear off that and how many will just slide it out. Uh, there's a lot of different personalities in the room. It just that's, Stick that under your leg, the cover, drop it in your purse, the pouch in front of you. You're not going to need that cover again unless you want to uh, slide it back in when you leave. But uh, set that aside. And I want you to open this copy of the New Testament to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Now as you're doing that, the next thing you may want to do is grab your readers. All right? And uh, um, I have them in my pocket if I get in a bind, all right? But Acts chapter 8, and you find Acts chapter 8, verse 26. And take the ribbon of this New Testament out of wherever it is marked currently and lay it right there in the crease for Acts chapter 8 verse 26 and when you do that close it all right so put the ribbon there at Acts 8 verse 26 the next thing that I want to ask you to do and I'm asking you to do a lot today okay if your tendency is to get comfortable and sit and then stand and leave it's going to be a little more active than that today those of you that are here uh, for the first time this is a little unique. Uh, it's not usually quite so much uh, audience participation uh, as today. But the next thing I want to ask you to do is locate a pen. P-N. I can say that with three syllables, I know. But uh, a pen. And they're in the chairs in front of you. It would be awesome if you have your own. Because you could take it with you. I need the pens in the room today for the next two hours, all right? So uh, we're going to replace the Bibles. You can take the Bibles. We need you to leave the pens. Uh, and if you walk out with it, don't worry about coming back. We're, we're okay. But locate a pen, and uh, you've got that in your hand because you're going to need it right now, all right? Next thing I'm asking you to do is to open the front cover of this Bible, and on the front cover of this Bible, well, there's, it's just white pages there, nothing written, written there, and would you write somewhere on that page, Romans, the word Romans, 3.23, so the verse, Romans 3.23, Romans 3, colon 23, just write it right there, somewhere on the front cover, and right under that, would you put the numbers 253. That's the page number for Romans 3.23. So Romans 3.23 and then un underneath that 2.53, 2.53. And now would you open your, this Bible to the very back cover and the very back. Again, two blank white pages and somewhere on those, black, on those blank white pages would you write this email address. This is an email address. Info at Watkinsville.org. I-N-F-O. Info, the at symbol. Info at Watkinsville.org. Somewhere along the way, it's going to occur to you why you might need that email address, okay? Because if you run into questions, there's things you want to... Uh, ask about their stories you want to tell me that's how those stories can get to me that's how those questions can get to us 
and that email is there, info at watkinsville.org. Now, I want to ask you to go back to where your ribbon is and open this Bible to Acts chapter 8. And here's the goal of this morning. The goal of this morning is for every one of us to leave the property with a New Testament marked in such a way that you could have a conversation with someone verse by verse by verse through the New Testament and lead them to a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. How many of you know somebody that's in heaven today because you led them to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? My prayer and my hope is, is that every one of us would be able to get to heaven one day and there would be somebody there already or there would be somebody arrive after we're already there that you'd be able to celebrate with together because you led them to Jesus Christ. I don't know of anything more exciting, uh, more strengthening to my faith than somebody else being saved I can't be saved again that happens once in our life but we can experience that over and over again when we lead somebody else to know Jesus Christ and today I want you to be in a position where you've got a tool you've got a way uh, to be able to lead somebody to Jesus you will not have to memorize uh, a single verse of scripture just have this as it's, it's a tool, it's a, it's a resource that you can use. Now let's look together in Acts chapter 8 at this account between um, a regular man named Philip and uh, a government official who was from Ethiopia. And look in Acts chapter 8 verse 26 and I want to read these verses. An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the desert road. So he got up and went. There was an Ethiopian man, a eunuch and high official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to worship in Jerusalem and was sitting in his chariot on his way home reading the prophet Isaiah aloud. The Spirit told Philip, go and join that chariot. When Philip ran up to it, he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? How can I, he said, unless someone guides me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the scripture passage he was reading was this, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will describe his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. The eunuch said to Philip, I ask you, who is the prophet saying this about? Himself or someone else? Philip proceeded to tell him, the good news about Jesus, beginning with that scripture. What I want to do with you today is to take the good news of scripture and us be in a position when we leave here, if we had a figurative chariot on a desert road experience, we would be able to take the scripture and walk somebody to the point of salvation and pray with them and they could pass from death to life they could cause heaven to rejoice and their eternity would be set wouldn't that be glorious it wouldn't that be glorious if you had opportunity to lead somebody to to miss hell and to gain heaven to have all their sins forgiven that's happened in your life for many of you and, and it's an opportunity for us to be able to lead somebody else to do that as well. Now, this is going to be very mechanical for a few minutes, okay? 
because it really is taking our ink pen and marking scripture and putting page numbers to where this Bible is a marked New Testament for sharing the gospel. Now back to your front cover. And inside your front cover you have Romans 3.23, page 253. And that's where I want you to go to right now. Romans 3.23. It happens to be on page 253. And when you get there, find verse 23 and take your ink pen and underline verse 23. You may can hold it in your hand, you may can put it in your lap, but underline this verse. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We know to read this verse before we get to the good news there's bad news and that's it for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God so you're on page 253 you've underlined verse 23 I want to ask you to write at the top of the page this question what does this say to you what does this say to you if you had someone read verse 23 of Romans 323 and they said for all have sinned fall short of the glory of God and say what does this say to you what does this say to you and and you're just listening to them they may say doesn't say anything okay let's let's keep reading where to from here so again that question at the top of the page what does this say to you at the bottom of the page write in the margin at the very bottom write Romans 6 23 Romans 6 23 and then you're going to put a page number out beside that Romans 6 23 P period or if you don't want if you want to just put the number it's 257 257 257 Romans 6 23 page 257 let's turn there just a couple of pages over it's page 257 and find Romans 6 23 and underline that verse Romans 6 23 on page 257 underline that verse for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord underline that verse and at the top of the page, write this question. What does this say to you? We believe the Bible is alive and active. That the, we believe in the Holy Spirit. And as we read God's word, just like Philip read the word with the Ethiopian eunuch, talked about the word of God, the spirit of God can bring conviction and conversion in the life of people so at the top of that page what does this say to you you read that verse you asked that question you may have a response it may be blank it may be a discussion at the bottom of the page where do you go to next at the bottom of the page write the verse John 3 3 j-o-h-n John 3 3 page 152 one five two John three three page one fifty two now let's turn to John three three page one fifty two John three three page one fifty two find verse three John three three and underline John three three Jesus replied, truly I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom 
of God. Out beside that verse, so in the margin right there on the left, would you take part of that margin and draw a small cross? The cross I put there is about a half inch tall. Just draw a cross. Beside that cross, would you put a small X? Beside John 3, 3, you're drawing a little cross, and beside that little cross, a little X. And here's the purpose of that. There's a different question I want you to ask right here than what does that say to you. Write this question at the bottom of the page. Why did Jesus come to die? Why did Jesus come to die? That cross and that little x is to remind you that there's a different question to ask right here and um, and the question is why did Jesus come to die and you ask that question after you read that verse now it's 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 very like very possible says I don't know why he came to die or I think this is why he came to die or maybe this is why he came to die and and this is not a time for you to Uh, correct the answer or to go into a long discussion of why Jesus came to die is to begin to just think about for all have sinned the wages of sin Jesus said that unless someone is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God You're, you're you're bringing in the cross of Jesus Christ on the other page at the bottom of the page so uh page 153 the other page here at the bottom write the verse John 14 6 John 14 6 page 178 John 14 6 page 178 when you ask that question why did Jesus come to die again it may be short it may be brief it may lead to a longer discussion at some point you're going to say well let's keep reading what God's word has to say and so let's, let's go to page 178, John 14, 6. And on page 178, John 14, 6, find verse 6, and let's underline that verse. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Just to underline that verse. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Again, right at the top of the page. What does this say to you? At some point, listen, you're, you're, you're having conversation. You're talking about, let me ask this question again. What does this verse say to you? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. A person has an answer. They, has a, they have a thought. They, they may have a question. They may say, nothing. I still don't get it. I still don't understand. So let's keep, let's keep reading. On the bottom of the opposite page, down at the bottom, write Romans 10, 9 through 10. Romans 10, colon, 9, hyphen, 10. Romans 10, 9 through 10. Page 262, 262, Romans 10, 9 through 10, page 262, and let's turn there. So you're on page 262, Romans 10, find verse 9 and verse 10, and let's underline it. You can underline it as I read it. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One believes with his heart, resulting in righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth, resulting in salvation. Underline those two verses. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. One believes with the heart, resulting in righteousness, and one confesses with the mouth, resulting in salvation. 
the bottom of that page, just write that question. What does this say to you? What does this say to you? And then on the other side of the page, down at the bottom, write 2 Corinthians. You may want to abbreviate that, C-O-R, 2 Corinthians 5, 15. 2 Corinthians 5, colon, 15. 2 Corinthians 5, 15. Page 297. Page 297. You're saying, let's keep reading 2 Corinthians 5, 15. Page 297. And underline verse 15. And he died... For all, so that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. Now, on the bottom of the page, on the other side, write this question. I bet you know what it is. What does this say to you? What does this say to you? We're letting the Spirit of God speak to hearts and lives as we read the living word of God it's put there as a reminder it's put there as a guide to keep the conversation going so we have 2 Corinthians 5 15 underlined on the other side what does this say to you on the bottom of the page 297 down at the bottom write Revelation 320 again you might abbreviate REV or the word Revelation 320 Page 404. Revelation 320, page 404. And let's turn there. And on page 404, find Revelation 3, verse 20, and let's underline it. See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. Don't write anything on that page yet, okay? Overachievers that are starting to write, what does that say to you? Don't write it, all right? But here's what I want you to write down at the bottom of the page. The Roman numeral nine. I-X, okay? I-X. Page I-X. If you want to put back to the front, that's fine. But in the front of this New Testament, we have some pages numbered with Roman numerals, and at the bottom of mine, I've written back to the front, page IX, page 9, and let's turn there. If you've read this verse, and you'd say, now let's go back to the front here, and look at page 9, Roman numeral 9, and you will see a page there, actually two pages, that tells you what I'm showing you this morning, except for the page numbers, how to mark a New Testament. So if you've missed some things, uh, you want to go back and review today, it's right here on these two pages. But under, under step two, you've gone back to this page. Under step two, then you see step three. When you come back to your Page 9 here, after looking at Revelation 3.20, you're coming to step 3. Underline, close with key questions. Just underline that. Close with key questions. And here are some questions that would help you move beyond the verses of Scripture that you've just read. We've read, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've read, the wages of sin is death. Uh, we, we've read, no man can be, uh, enter the kingdom unless they've been born again. Uh, we've, we've read these verses, and now you're coming back and you're asking this person, are you a sinner? And, and you, you, you're working through their responses. Uh, do you want forgiveness of your sin? Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you and rose again? 
Are, are you willing to surrender your life to Christ? Are you ready to invite Jesus into your heart and into your life? And right here, as you ask these questions, you're, just, you're praying at the same time that you're asking these questions. And then here's some words that can guide you through a prayer. Now, this whole process of, of putting a tool in your hand to share the gospel, uh, is, sometimes it can raise something up in us, especially if you've been a believer for a long time and you've studied evangelism. or You, you may have some apprehensions about even using this tool. That's okay. Here's what I want to exhort you to do. Use, use something to share the gospel. Find a way to personally share your faith with somebody else. But here's one tool, and you come to this point. Somebody said, yes, I'm, I'm a sinner. I'd, I'd like to have forgiveness of sin. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe he rose again. I would like to invite him into my life. Then here's a prayer on this page. This, this prayer is, is, I don't want to be legalistic about this prayer, but it voices some things that we need from our heart to say to the Lord and surrender to him for salvation. And you could pray this prayer with me, and, and it's right here on this page. Heavenly Father, I've sinned against you. I want forgiveness for all my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again. Father, I give you my life to do with you, to do with as you wish. I want Jesus Christ to come into my life and into my heart. This I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Now, here's, here's, here's what can happen right now. Believers in this room, we're marking our Bible to share this good news with somebody else. It's very likely that God's brought somebody into the room this morning, and you actually need these verses of Scripture. You actually need this clear presentation of the gospel and right now you need to pray a prayer like I just prayed just like I just read and and I want to ask you would you would you pray that right now and surrender your life to Jesus look back at that prayer it, and, and from your heart you could pray that right now Heavenly Father I've sinned against you why don't, why don't we just why don't we bow right now in the room okay why don't we bow just hold on to your Bibles there and if you already know Jesus, he's already saved you, pray for anybody else in this room right now that doesn't know Christ. And if you, doesn't, you, you do not know Christ and you want to have your sins forgiven, you want eternal life, you want a relationship with God, you believe Jesus died for you and rose again, would you right now pray to Jesus? And, and, I'll, and I'll use these words just to keep us as a guide. Heavenly Father, I've sinned against you. I want forgiveness for all my sins. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and rose again. Father, I give you my life to do with as you wish. I want Jesus to come into my life and into my heart. And I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer or you're following along, marking your Bible, I want you to turn in this little New Testament to page 429, way back in the back, all the way to the back, page 429. Let's look there together. And you see those words on that page, 429, welcome to the family. Somebody in this room, you just prayed and you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's written on the page, but I want to say it out loud. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Amen? Hey, right there, yes. I mean, you know what we're doing? If that just happened, what's happening in heaven right now? They're rejoicing. They're rejoicing. Now, God, God help us with our unbelief right now. God help us in this room right now. To, to, to celebrate, to believe that God's still in the saving business. Do you believe that? He's still in the saving business. And maybe somebody right now in this room just trusted Christ as Lord and Savior. And um, 
Here's the page. It's welcome to the family. There are verses here. You've got the Bible in your hand. I would encourage you to read it. It talks to you about what's just happened in your life, becoming a family of, part of the family of God. Turn over the page. And you say, I'm just not sure. This page talks about assurance of salvation. That first sentence, your acceptance of Jesus' salvation is now a fact. An act of history that marks a milestone in your life story. The God who saves you is trustworthy and unable to lie. You can have confidence in God's word and his promises. And here's a verse from God's word. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. The one who has the son has life. The one who, ha who does, not, does not have life. The one who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I've written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. You can know that you have eternal life. The beautiful thing about this New Testament that you have in your hand continues to walk you through what a person needs to do as they trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. What we do after we trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is what we publicly proclaim that through baptism and some of you need to follow the Lord in believers baptism those saved before this day but have never been baptized since you were saved or you were just saved it's it's time for you to take this step of being baptized and and it just on on the closing pages are there to help know what next steps to take and it's an incredible resource for you to either leave in someone's hand or to begin to disciple someone in what to do next in their relationship with Jesus Christ. So what you have in your hand right now is a tool. Is a tool. I want to go back to uh, Acts chapter 8 where our ribbon is. And it says here, I pick up in the verse we left off, I'm going to go back to verse 36. As they were traveling down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, there's water. What would keep me from being baptized? And so he ordered the chariot to stop. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. And the eunuch did not see him any longer, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip appeared in Azotus, and he was traveling and preaching the gospel in all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Philip did what the Spirit of God led him to do, and he shared the scriptures and explained the scriptures, and the Spirit of God worked in the heart of the Ethiopian, and he trusted Jesus as his Lord and Savior, and he publicly proclaimed that through baptism. I, I want to... I want, a, I want some stories like Philip has. I want some miraculous stories. I want you to have some miraculous stories. Uh, we have good news to tell. We have good news. Now, uh, think about Philip. Philip was a regular guy. This is not the Philip that was... Uh, spent three years with Jesus he was recognized for his faith and he was one of the seven that was asked to help wait on tables when there was conflict in the New Testament church but he was a regular guy but know this also about uh, Philip he had a relationship with Jesus Christ and having a relationship with Jesus Christ meant that he had a story of faith to share and tell and when the Spirit of God spoke to him Philip was ready. He was ready. And he went. In fact, when he saw the Ethiopian in the chariot, the verse of Scripture says that he did what? Do you remember anybody? Three-letter word, he what? He ran. He saw the chariot, and he ran up to the chariot. God help us, God help me that I would be so ready to share the gospel and share the good news of Jesus Christ that in my spirit, if not in my body, there would be this running obedience 
to share the good news with people who need the good news. He, he, he was a regular guy. He was a ready guy. He, was, he had the resources that he needed. And, and, and when you walk away this morning, you've got the resources that you need. What are the resources that we need to lead somebody to saving faith in Jesus? The Word of God and the Spirit of God. And if you've got a relationship with Jesus Christ, you've got the Spirit living in you, and you've got the Word of God in your hand, we have the same resources that the book of Acts has so that God could give you miraculous stories of sharing your faith. Now, as a college student, I had an opportunity to be around some of the most effective soul winners I had ever seen in my life. Honestly, as a as a 20-something year old, as a college student, I really thought that was what the professionals did. We had a preacher. He was paid to be a preacher. He was probably the one paid to make sure that everybody went to heaven. All right? And I got around four guys. I mean, immediately this week, when I said, who are the soul winners that I know? These four names immediately came to my mind, and this was like, I don't know, 30, I can't do, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't do the math, 35, over 35 years ago. And, and Charles Meadows, Howard Hardy, Olin Hill, and Tom Ford. And those four men, Charles Meadows was a research professor in the College of Agriculture at Auburn. Howard Hardy was an accountant. Olin Hill owned, owned a men's store, and he was known as the man with the tape. He wore a measuring tape around his neck. You never saw him without his measuring tape. He said, if you ever caught me without my measuring tape, I'll give you a new suit. He, he owned a, a, a men's store. And then um, Tom Ford was a professor at Auburn, and he taught health and physical education. And those four men were the greatest personal soul winners that I'd ever been around in my life. Regular guys, accountants, professors, businessmen who led many to Jesus. Don't forget to share the good news. Now I want to know this morning, heads bowed, you're praying for those in the room. If anyone in this room today Pray to receive Jesus Christ. I simply just want to give you this chance to acknowledge that to me. And, uh, and, and that's it for today. And uh, the Lord would lead you to take a step of baptism or leave that with you. But you say, Pastor, today as you went through this, I know that I needed a Savior. And I prayed and received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Would you just lift your hand big and wave at me right now? Anybody in the room? Just anybody in the room want to share that with me today? Just lift your hand up. I just prayed this morning to receive Christ. Just lift your hand up high. Anyone? All right, thank you. You put your hand down. Anyone else? Anyone else? Others? All right. Thank you. Father in heaven, souls are saved this morning. Hallelujah. Some noise, some celebration is going on in heaven. And uh, maybe there's some more that didn't put their hand in the air, but they're going to take a step after this service and be saved today. Lord, I do pray that you would use the people in this room. You'd use me. Lord, let me, let me be first that would use this tool to lead somebody to Jesus in the days ahead. Would you pray this as we get ready to close this morning? Would you pray this prayer? God, would you give me miracle stories using the word of life change, of salvation. And I want to ask you, if you would join in in rejoicing with heaven right now for those saved in this room right now, would you just put your hands together and celebrate today those that are saved? That's what they're doing in heaven right now. God, stir our heart. Let us be enthused about the good news that we have in Jesus. Let's stand to our feet. Tell somebody about Jesus.